inside the Smith Center as we are moments away from the start of UNC Asheville and North Carolina on Roy Williams Court. UNC Asheville out of the Big South Conference. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Here is the starting lineup for Mike Morell in his fourth year as the head coach. He's got a transfer from Tennessee, Drew Pember, and all he's done is lead the team in scoring and rebounding. Across the way for Hubert Davis, his starting lineup brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Features the big man inside the junior center, 6'10", Armando Baycock. He is the leading rebounder for the team, fourth in the conference. North Carolina starts with the basketball. Lineup for Mike Morell in his fourth year as the head coach. He's got a transfer from Tennessee, Drew Pember, and all he's done is lead the team in scoring and rebounding. Across the way for Hubert Davis, his starting lineup brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Features the big man inside the junior center, 6'10", Armando Baycock. He is the leading rebounder for the team, fourth in the conference. North Carolina starts with the basketball. Caleb Love, leading scorer on the team early on in the season. Over 17 points per game. Love. Backing it out. Baycott trying to establish position. And they're deep into the shot clock. It's at five. Entry from Davis. Baycott the turnaround. He did not release it in time. And that was a good uh, defensive possession by UNC Asheville. I thought that Carolina had a couple of opportunities to be able to go earlier. No heels. So again, not a good way to get started. UNC Asheville comes in with a record of two and two. They won last Thursday against Tennessee Tech, 61-55 at a multi-team event in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hember got cut off, had to send it back out. Baycott high for the rebound, knocked around and taken by Carolina. Love on the run. Rayshon Leaky Black. There you go. Baycott throws it in the second row. We haven't got a chance to talk about the key, but one of the things for Carolina is that points off of turnovers for the other team. Carolina has given up 19 points off of turnovers. And again, not off to a good start. One of the things that they suffered for last year was that an inexperienced backcourt in early turnovers. Kember. Got it back. Looking to score. Shot clock is at eight. Finally get the shot away. And a miss from Jones. Good defensive possession by Carolina. Love all the way. Not high enough on the square. He hit the deck. Asheville wants to run. Battle passed up the shot. Pember. Well defended by Garcia. No score in the early minutes of this one. Straight away, ripping the ropes. And it's a three ball from Dawson Garcia. And that's one of the things that Garcia brings to this team is the ability to stretch the court, his ability to knock down threes. The answer comes at the other end from Doc Battle. Nice penetration by Stephanie being able to get the ball over to Battle in that far corner. One of the things you saw them work out during the shoot around today. Potential two on one. Stripped away by Garcia. So UNC Asheville will keep possession. Our keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealer with Brian Oliver. Well, Tom, one of the things for UNC Asheville, points off turnovers. This is one of those teams that's going to put a lot of pressure, extend their defense. And for Carolina, we talked about it. Defend with intensity. No secret that they're last in the conference with 83 points allowed. They have to turn up that intensity. Davis flying in. Pember got a piece of it. Baycott will clean it up. Nice follow by Baycott. We haven't had a chance to talk about Pember leading the conference in shot blocking in four games. He's one of those guys that's going to put a lot of pressure underneath the basket. Pember had a career high seven blocks in the win against Tennessee Tech. Added 16 points and seven boards. Stephanie was cut off. 
Battle dropped it off to Pember, and it'll fall. Aggressive move from Drew Pember, the junior from Knoxville, Tennessee. And Tom, what do you see is about from UNC Asheville doing a good job of being again to the lane. And that last time, Battle coming up with the drop off to Pember. So North Carolina had turned it over three times on their first five possessions. But they've tied this game at five. Pember knocked it out of bounds. Tar Heels will maintain possession. Pember to the bench for UNC Asheville. A couple of blocks in the early going for Pember. Manic has come into the game for North Carolina. Driving baseline, it's black and he got fouled in midair. So UNC Asheville out of the Big South went 10 and 10 a season ago, 2 and 2 early going. Coach, last time they went to the NCAA tournament, 2016. They won their conference tournament championship five times. Black at the free throw line. Coming into the night, three of four in total from the stripe for Leakey Black, the senior from Concord, North Carolina, and Cox Mill High School. Two-point lead for the Tar Heels. Early in the first half. The ninth all-time meeting between the programs. North Carolina has won all of the previous eight. Trying to work in the paint with battle. Good defense by Leaky Black. Not falling for the pump plate, stand in front of his man, stands up. So North Carolina coming off of that loss on Sunday. The number 17, Tennessee. That is Manic. And that's one of the things that Brady Manic brings to this Carolina team is his ability to be able to knock down that three. And when you run that pick and roll, a lot of times you see Biggs uh, fall to the basket. He's going to flare out knocking down that three early. He was 6 of 10 from long distance in the loss to Tennessee and had a game-high 24 points. And he's knocking down his first three of the game. His 12th made of the season. Brady Manic. Security that protects what matters most. And by the Works Nitro. The Works Nitro, available at worksnitro.com. Seven-time national champs. The last one coming in 2017 for North Carolina. They've got the five-point lead against UNC Asheville. Manic connected on a three just a moment ago. Bring so much experience in scoring and rebounding. To the lineup, played four seasons at Oklahoma. He's shooting 49% of the season. He found his man underneath. Black couldn't spin it off the glass, but a whistle and foul. Good pass by Manic, and he set that up because off of that flare, you had two defenders run over to him from UNC Asheville, leaving Leaky Black wide open. Ron Groover, Justin Porterfield, and Claire Aubrey are officials tonight. Black. Top. Back to the free throw line. Tom, one of the things we talked about, obviously, with Carolina is that, you know, they've had some struggles as of late defensively, but this is one of the better shooting teams in the league. Knocking down nine three-pointers, and you've got two guys, oh, actually three guys, and R.J. Davis, Curran Walton, and Brady Manick with at least two three-pointers made a game. North Carolina shot a season low, though, Brian, against Tennessee. On Sunday, 36% the 89-72 loss. They are in the midst of a 6-0 run and have their largest lead of the first half against Asheville. When Hubert Davis throws around and shoot around today, we would see a different Carolina team with a lot more energy, a lot better than what they started they played against Tennessee. It's a long straightaway three for the Bulldogs and a miss from Luke Lawson. Tough shot. <laughs> And on cue, we talked about R.J. Davis and his ability to knock down the three. And one of the things that he and Caleb Love, sophomore campaign, have been a little bit more settled, being able to pick their shots and get it within that within the offense. R.J. Davis averaging 14 points per game. He has increased the run to 9-0. And they can add to it here with Black. Davis in the corner. 
sophomore from White Plains, New York. One of the tri captains on this team this season. Manic in rhythm. Let it fly. And Lawson went high for the board. Bulldogs have missed their last five shots. Make it six. Ember in tight. Couldn't get it to fall. From beyond the three point line of the miss from Dawson Garcia. He does have a made three in this first half. Keep it at this end, according to Claire Aubrey. Big time changes. Baycott back into the ball game. When you look at the substitution, I think earlier in the first half, Hubert Davis trying to find groups that are going to be able to come out and supply that that intensity. One of the things he talked about is his guys competing and playing hard. Not so much just on the defense, but all along with bringing the energy early. Justin McCoy and Kerwin Walton have joined the lineup. Shot clock to eight for the Bulldogs. Thorpe ran into a double team. Well defended by McCoy, and Baycott has the rebound. Good defense by Carolina being able to settle, uh, stop them from being able to score, and then get out. McCoy, Manic. He's got another three. Scouting report would tell you if you're Thorpe is that you cannot leave Manic. He's one of those guys, again, shooting at a high level. Score big with the Nets on your mobile device. Download the Yes app now. Brady Manic with a couple of three pointers. Made six of those against Tennessee. 24 points, a game high. For his career, over 1,500 points, over 700 rebounds, combining four seasons at Oklahoma. Closing on Jude, but not fast enough. Good penetration penetration by Stephanie being able to open that up for Jude. This UNC Asheville team will show pressure on all makes, trying to disrupt Carolina. Tar Heels are four of five from beyond the arc, Brian, just one of six inside it. Team that shoots 40% from three-point territory. That is fifth in the early going in the ACC. Davis drew the double. Manic trying to find Baycott, creating space. Hember may have gotten a piece of it. The officials are going to talk about it here. As officials talk about I thought Brady Manic had Kern Walton wide out. Talking about whether that ball hit the rim. Yeah, pardon, it looked like it hit the rim. Most certainly did, based on the replay from our fine technical crew. That is Ron Groover. Physics. Talking with Coach Morrell. It will be Asheville basketball. So the ball did hit the rim, inadvertent whistle. They used the possession arrow to give the ball to Asheville. So the arrow now favoring North Carolina here in the first half, inside of 12 minutes to go. Side rim, and Davis wants to run. Found an open spot and hit the bottom of that. And that high pick and roll with Davis and Baycott allowed him to be able to get in. UNC Asheville's got to do a better job of being able to run. Six points on two made threes on three chances McCoy on the baseline ran into a defender and the foul goes against North Carolina they've got the lead 19-8 against this ninth all-time meeting between the programs they last met in 2011 North Carolina traveled to UNC Asheville and beat the Bulldogs 91-73. And they are 6-0 against Asheville here in Chapel Hill. Jones had to give it up. Shot box at 10. Jones on the drive and off the backboard. That was a great penetration by Jones, but I still like the weak side by Armando Baycott. That's one of the things that if you're trying to get better with defense, you got to make sure that everyone's doing a good rotation. One of those situations was good defense, but better off. Dejon Jones 
with 12 points in the win against Tennessee Tech. Baycott in traffic, not an issue for number five. And, and how about the seal by Mondo Baycott being able to get him so low where you can't allow a guy like that to be able to get you right underneath the basket. And then with Pember coming at him, good finish at the rim. You may see Baycott extend the range every once in a while. He's been working on that mid-range jumper to go along with the solid inside game. Off the back iron and taken by the Tar Heels, Walton. Manic demanding the basketball. Try to go to Baycott again. Pember trying to hang with him. Can't do it. Uh, and again, that's just de him deboing in the post. Again, realizing he's got a much uh, lighter pimp using his body against him. Six points now for Baycott. Goes 6'10", 240. Pember is 6'10", 190. Slight difference. Though. I'm no math whiz. That's like 50 <laughs> pounds, bro. That's a slight difference. Okay. There's the steal. Love angles in. Hangs and scores. And that's where Caleb Love has gotten better. You've seen him throughout the year. That he, I think that his commitment to defense, being able to understand that he, with his talent, can get into those passing lanes, being able to come with that steal, letting the finish. First two of the game for Love on the driving layup. He is the leading scorer for the Tar Heels this season, over 17 per game. A three out of the corner comes from Doc Battle. And Stephanie has proven in the first half that he can get down downhill and get into the teeth of that Carolina defense and see Kern Walden come up short. Good hustle to save that one. That was McCoy. Baycott. Pember came in late. And the foul is called against Pember. Well, Baycott, you realize, is you see how low he's able to get the ball down low. Anytime you let a guy like that do that, it's, it's hard. And then again, taking his time, giving a dribble, and then use his body against him, or give him a little chicken wing for the finish. UNC Asheville is going to have to decide if they're going to send someone there. But then if they send someone, then that's where Baycott gets it out to those shooters. Baycott, the junior from Richmond, Virginia. Hairston comes in, as does Luke Lawson. Jude and Stephanie leave. Baycott at the free throw line for North Carolina. Big performances against Brown and the College of Charleston. What a game that was as North Carolina went on the road and Baycott had a career-high 24 points. He was 10 of 12 from the floor against the Cougars. Well, when you look at how he's gotten off to a good start this year, he's one of those guys that when you look at it as far as a contender for ACC Player of the Year, Great skill set, a guy that can finish, has improved on his range as well. I like that early call, Brian. So many talented players in and around the ACC this season. It's early yet. Yes, North Carolina has lost two games in November, which never happens in this part of the country. But when you look at the teams, that Purdue, Purdue team, they are one of the best in the Big Ten. And Absolutely. Tennessee is one of the tops that's going to be giving a lot of problems to teams in the SEC. So, again, you want to win all the games. But when talking to Hubert Davis, you'd rather go through these growing pains in November than January. You know, they haven't lost back-to-back -back games in November since 2010. Losses against Purdue, which is now the number three team in the country, and Tennessee over the weekend. Bulldogs will get another chance at it. About to cross the eight-minute threshold of the first half. Tom Wormy, along with Brian Oliver, and our outstanding ACC College Basketball Production Crew with you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and the Dean Smith Center. Brian, I know you got some fond memories in this building, right? Man, you know what we were talking <laughs> earlier? I got my first start as a freshman at Georgia Tech. Wow. In the Dean Dome, I think, playing against Kenny Smith, it was definitely the deer in the headlights uh, opportunity. You know Kenny's going to call you right now. Say he teed you up. They couldn't D up Baycott, though. But how about Armando Baycott and the fact that he's just bullying them down low, offensive rebounds, and again, being able to crash those boards and his ability to finish. Baycott already up to nine points. Also got four rebounds. And that ball is going back to the Tar Heels. Armando Baycott. Baycott's one of those guys, again, big guys eating early. Going back a little bit to 1986, North Carolina won the game, and there's another legend here as well. He's got that seat right in the corner, Roy Williams. And by the way, when we were here for the shoot-around, what was it, like 1.30, 2 o'clock? Coach Williams pulled up in the parking lot. I mean, is he still on schedule for 
coming to shoot around, having the pregame meal, going to the office, looking over the scouting reports. I I'm sure he does, and I'm sure he's probably, you know, still got his key card, probably still got a little <laughs> place where he can go in and no one's stopping him when he comes in. Incredible. 903 career wins, third most in Division I history for Roy Williams. When you look at North Carolina, and they're up 30-13, and uh, one of the things that's jumped out to me, Hubert Davis talked about the energy that his team will come out and compete. You can tell, not so much on the offensive end, but just in how their body language is and how they're showing and, and crashing the boards. Well, I love what he said to you at the shoot-around, Brian. You said, Coach, we've had a couple of tough games the last two. And he said, you know and, and everybody else should be too. And I like that because yeah. if you know Hubert Davis, you know a, a personable guy, but he was serious as you see Armando Baycott continue to dominate Timber down low. And I can appreciate that because again, he is one of the most classy guys I've ever met. But he said, hey, you know what? I'm upset because that guys didn't compete. Baycott has nine of the last 13 North Carolina points. Coach Davis said to us, Hey, if you're playing for that last point on the blacktop, on the playground, that's how you got to play every single possession here in the ACC. And what I really like is that he's so straightforward with it without hesitation. He said, if guys don't come out and play with that energy, they'll be sitting next to me. That's right. And he said on the defensive end, as Garcia hits the shot out of the corner, on the defensive end, you got three choices or you're going to get a fourth, which and is a seat on the bench. He right? was saying the, the, the <laughs> gap, the ball, midline, and on the bench. Loved it. You'll get a seat next to me on that bench, although he has not sat down the whole game so far. Going up and down the sideline. They send it back out to Lawson, launching a three. That was off of the fingertips of Baycock. I got to give props to the uh, North Carolina bigs, Baycott and Garcia, and how they've been able to play a smaller lineup from UNC Asheville. And a lot of times you see battle trying to penetrate, and North Carolina's done a great job of being able to stay in front of the ball. Jar Heels leading the Bulldogs 12-6 in paint points. And on the boards, 20-7, the advantage for North Carolina. Anthony Harris picks up the foul. Well, Friday on most of these same regional sports networks, it's more ACC basketball for the broadcast time in your region. I'll be there with my broadcast colleague, Brian Oliver, day after Thanksgiving. Sorry, right, I'm going to tell you, my guy. Okay, so <laughs> I can't wait Pump to hear this. Pumpkin pumpkin, or sweet potato? Uh, bring them both. Let me have them both. <laughs> Come on. Maybe slight edge to pumpkin. Slight edge. So we'll see on Friday as well as battle he did at the end of the shot clock. Georgia Tech, the defending champs in the ACC. They won at the tournament last year, won that title game against Florida State. Josh Pastor and his crew back to defend that title without Moses Wright, player of the year in the ACC a season ago. How about, uh, and also without Jose Alvarado. Exactly. On both ends of the floor there. Michael DeVoe taking up the reins on the last big win against rival Georgia at 37. Did you see... Jude knocked down another three. And DeVoe was unable to play last night against college, uh, Charleston Southern, rather. Had some flu-like symptoms. Expected to be back in the lineup, though, on Friday as they take on Georgia Southern. 425 to go in the first half. The defensive possession by UNC Asheville, you see. Thorpe looking for battle. They cannot communicate properly. Here comes Love, weaving his way. He's a one-man fast break. Dropped it off. Garcia, second effort, too strong. Garcia's got to finish that. At last, was a nice little dump off by, by Caleb Love being able to probe. Talked about Manic being a great addition to the lineup. Dawson Garcia, the sophomore who played last season at Marquette. Only four points against Tennessee as he misses the shot from the paint. Did have 26 points, though, a season high against Purdue and went 10 of 13 from the floor, eight boards. And we talked about this North Carolina team. They definitely have the firepower when you look at what Bar Bay Baycock can give you, Manic, Garcia, Love, and R.J. Davis. But they have come out with a lot more energy on the defensive end the first half. Had to play Purdue and Tennessee back-to-back. -back. Jude, the dribble and shot, comes up short. 
Battle trying to work the offensive glass a little fall. Nice offensive rebound by Battle. Hanging around, and, and he's an undersized four. He's definitely a tough competitor, especially one of the offensive rebounds. Those games against Purdue and Tennessee, part of the Hall of Fame tip-off tourney at Mohegan Sun Casino, Uncasville, Connecticut. North Carolina made 12 threes against Purdue. Not bashful for shooting the three. Shot clock down to one for Davis. He got it away, rattles out. Garcia was looking for it, but knocked it out of bounds. North Carolina has not scored in over three minutes. They've got the lead, though, by 15, 35-20. Shooting it efficiently, and I love his position and the fact that he's actually four rebounds and has played some defense, too. We talked about the matchup between him and Battle. Off to a good start, first half. Do you see Baycott's interior moves a little sharper, a little crisper? As absolutely, and we talked about that with uh, Coach Davis early. He said he put in the work over the offseason. Again, wanted to come back and improve, and definitely off to a good start. Fourth time this season that Baycott has gotten double digits in scoring. R.J. Davis is going to pick up this foul. His first. L.J. Fork is at the free throw line for UNC Ashburn. Averages close to 10 points per game for the redshirt senior from West Palm Beach, Florida. First free throws of the night. Just been running up and down the court. Nicely called game so far by Ron Gruber, Justin Porterfield, and Claire Aubrey is the first female official to call a game here in Chapel Hill. Coach Davis' team on a 7-0. And Jeff Stelibo was one of those guys, too. McDonald's All-American. Jeff could fill it up. I remember playing against him back in my day. Jeff was one of those guys that could shoot the lights out of him. Jeff Lebo from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Sure, my buddy Jeff could still stroke it. Sean May and Raymond Felton. Both were drafted by the Bobcats off of that team. Felton, number five, Sean May. Number 13. But I digress, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Davis von Manick. He goes inside Baycott. An amazing selfish, unselfish play by, by Manick. Manick had a wide open three, opting to be able to, get to pass that ball over to Baycott. When you run that double pick and roll, you've got to pick your poison whether you're going to cut off the dribbler or get back to that three point shoot. A great offensive possession by North Carolina. 13 points now for Baycott, leading all scorers in the first half. Also has four rebounds. He, Black, and Manick. Look at that defense by Orlando Baycott. They've all got four rebounds, and that one will drop on the runner from Doc Battle. Minute and change to go as the Tar Heels slow it down for the moment on this possession. Black tried to go right back to Baycott. Couldn't do it. Twenty-nine percent from the floor for Asheville in the first half. North Carolina, fifty percent shooting. Again. Tom, I'm going to talk about that defense by Armando Baycott being able to keep the guys in front of him. You see the penetration. He just stay in front of his man and cut him off. Four kicked it out to Jude. That's a three. Rims out. It will go out of bounds. And it will stay with Asheville. That pick and roll action that they're running with Drew simply is to make him this league. You have to make shots if you want to be able to make them pay. He's two of five from beyond the arc. Four of 20. Three-point field goals in the first half for UNC Asheville. Uh, up by a lot more than 13. Still within striking distance. You can see if Pember can knock this down. In and out for Pember. Struggles continue from beyond. 22 feet, one and three quarter inches away. Carolina. They've made five three-pointers in this first half. Baycott leads the way with 13 points. Love trying to dribble through the double team. Baycott scooped it up, lost the handle at the very end, and North Carolina will not get a shot away. 37-24 is the advantage for the Tar Heels. 
Baycott was sick. Always look at coming out into the second half. First five minutes is always critical. And for USC Asheville, they've got to find a way of, of doing a better job of guarding Alondo Baycott in the post. And then for North Carolina, continue to use that pick and roll action to open up the three, and you keep feeding the beast as Armando Baycott down low. A near steal for battle. Davis comes out of that corner, had it blocked by Pember. Nice recover by Pember. Seven blocks in the most recent game. For the most part, UNC Asheville has been able to get what they want, but you got to be able to knock down some shots. Again, that's not a shot that you want coming out in the first half with contested three. Baycott, power dribble on the block. Second effort, fights. Being able to come in and challenge Baycott at the rim and get that block. Jones was there to help him as well for UNC Asheville. Jones with just two points, though, in the first half. Average is close to 10 per game. He's got the ball now. Gives it up. Shot clock's at 10. Stephanie. Long rebound. The defensive position by, uh, possession by North Carolina. Love. Gave it up. Oh! Black missed from close range. Might have gotten caught between a dunk and a layup there, it looks like. Pember on Manic. Black knocked it away for a moment. Up and under, and the miss. And again, missed opportunities by UNC Asheville. They're getting good looks. You have to be able to finish if you're going to be able to get crawled into this, uh, this lead. The frustrations for head coach Mike Morell. This team with a couple of good looks couldn't convert. Going to get the ball back here. Teams have combined for 0 for 7 shooting so far in this first half. Coach Morell, his team 9 and 5 and 4th in the Big South a season ago, losing in the quarters of that conference tournament. He missed out on the second game. For them in that tournament because of COVID protocols. Hopefully, most of that and those issues behind us. Great to see the fans in the building being courtside as well. Who's that last sequence? Above the shoulder there. I guess they're taking a look at it. Now that was Thorpe, the player for Asheville. But back to your point about fans in the building. It's amazing what you take for granted until it's taken away from oh my you. My gosh. Uh, just to be back in the arena. And you say again, elbow above the, the rip. The show. Ron Groover came over to talk to Brian, get us the update. Common He's foul. Common foul. We are out to set up position. So the Bulldogs get the basketball. Man Manic has a couple of threes to his credit, Brian, in the first half. And neither team have been able to scratch in the second half. Yeah. UNC <laughs> Asheville, again, they've been able to get those books. They just have to make some shots. Step. They're trying to free up Jones and Caleb Love doing a good job of being able to shadow him. Good read by, by R.J. Davis coming across, realized that they were trying to make that cross catch for a pass. And that's one of the things that Hubert Davis was talking about was the energy and intensity, especially on the defensive end. Davis set his career high against Brown, 26 points in that victory. Averages 14 per game. That is Thorpe twisting and scoring for the Bulldogs. Nice move by Thorpe. Back the other way, and Black driving, and Ember was back defensively. He'll pick up the personal foul. Time for protecting the paint. Brought to you by CPI Security. And one of the things for UNC Asheville being able to protect the paint. Again, we talked about Pember and his shot blocking ability. One of the things that they've done that they've challenged Carolina hard. They get Pember with four blocks a game. Four or five from the line for Black. All of his points from the stripe so far. Substitution, UNC Asheville. Cody Jude is in. LJ Thorpe is out. Sean Malik Black 
or Leaky. Leaky. One of the best nicknames going. Fans inside this building got used to Leaky Black wearing number one for North Carolina as a senior in the lineup. Battle, stun, threw it away. Davis hustles after it. Nifty oh. dribble, oh. tried to drop it off to Baycott. Couldn't collaborate. Vision defense by North Carolina, especially getting over to Jones. Stop Jones from attacking the rim. So he'll launch, use all of the rim, and have it spin out. You hear Coach Davis. Yelling out those commands to his car heels. Love got bumped on the way in. Stephanie was defending. Claire Aubrey made the call. That's the first on Stephanie. Dawson Garcia returns to the lineup for Baycott. He is yet to score in the second half. Stuck on 13 points. UNC Asheville doing a better job of being able to not allow him to be able to get them sealed in the paint. Opting to try to front and making that, that entry pass a lot more difficult than the first half. It's against the Tar Heels. And R.J. Davis called for the offensive foul. A little bit of a clear out in that backdoor cut. And again... Carolina has not been able to extend that lead. We talk about them being up 15. It's comfortable. UNC Asheville still much, much in this game. Got to find some offense from somewhere. Nine turnovers in the game for North Carolina. Hember. Jones. Like he might get three free throws. Foul was on Davis closing. That's his third. Tar Heels up by 15. They led by as many as 20 in the first half. Had a 13 point halftime lead. Haven't played the Bulldogs from UNC Asheville since 2011 when the Heels went on the road and won that game in Asheville, North Carolina. Neither team shooting the lights out of it, both bumps and five. <laughs> Understatement. A little bit of a rock fight going on here. <laughs> Remember, Jones was fouled on the three-point attempt, so he'll have one more free throw. Don't forget to stay tuned for the fast break presented by your local Ford dealer. It's coming up here in the second half, North Carolina and UNC Asheville. Jones being able to knock down all three of those free throws. You see them come up with a... Still off of that, that pressure. Jones did not get the bounce. Manic with the box out. They need him to get going. Only two points in the first half. A lot of times when you're a shooter, if you can see the ball going to the rim, helps you out. Getting those two, those three free throws. They need his three-point shot from behind to get them rolling. Marable is back into the lineup for Asheville. He wears number 11. There's a steal by Jones. Potential three on two. He'll do it himself against Manic, who blocks him. Good defense by Brady Manic, realizing to go vertical. Trying to find Garcia underneath off of his fingertips and out of bounds. So Manic made the play at the defensive end. Manic hit those two early threes, but hasn't even really shot it that much since, Brian. Well, and I think that what UNC Asheville did a better job of being able to close out, and they decided that they would close out on those three point three point shooters from North Carolina. That's what actually opened up for Armando Baycott to start dominating inside because they decided to take those threes away. But again, Baycott stuck on 13 points and the five made threes all in the first half for North Carolina. That's Jude. Again, here comes UNC Asheville. Again, we talked about the fact that they were to keep it close with their defense, cutting that lead down to nine. Harris to Garcia, the quick double team. Maribel's going to pick up the foul. If you're Marable, you don't want to reach over like that. You're already playing solid defense to reach over Garcia. Garcia has not been the guy that's really been able to dominate. Third foul. This is the closest UNC Asheville has been since it was 17 to 8 in the first half.
Good pass. Good pass. Manic is the cutter. And that's one of the things that you get from Garcia and a guy that's a willing pass. A pass a lot of times he'll set up on the block. And again, good dive by Manic. Just mentioned how Manic was not on the offensive flow, but he was the man on the move without the basketball. And the Bulldogs get the tip at the rim. Jones on the tip in. And again, seemed like he started to find his offense a little bit. In the last three minutes, two points and five turnovers for the Tar Heels. It was Garcia on the drive attempt. Marable picked up the foul for UNC Asheville, his fourth. So he headed to that bench. With coach Mike Morrell. Here's Garcia on the spin. Nice touch. Good set play right there. You saw Caleb Love open up and you saw Garcia be able to get established posi position down low. And a guy that can finish with either hand. Didn't have 26 a season high against Purdue on Saturday. This is Jude again trying to line one up. It's off the mark. Garcia got tangled up with Jude in the paint. So Jude down there fighting for position. Garcia get caught. Extending that arm around the, the, the throat area. First foul on Garcia. Bulldogs have only turned it over six times. That high pick and roll with Stephanie and, and Jude has been something that's worked out for them. Interesting to see if they go back to the pin down or a pick and roll. Nashville shooting just 28% as a team for the game. It's a tough drive in baskets. Stephanie on the move. Chance for the old school three-point play. And nice action by UNC Asheville. They were running a stagger for Stephanie. You see right now absorbing the contact, being able to finish at the rim. UNC Asheville has been able to call their way back into this game. Again, with an opportunity to, to cut it down to, to eight. Anthony Harris picked up his second personal foul for North Carolina. And Stephanie at the free throw line, 85% of the season. I think you might want that one back. Love pushes it up for North Carolina. Just six turnovers in the first half, seven already in the second half for the Tar Heels. And you can make it eight as they throw that one away. Kerwin Walton looking for Manic and they cannot combine. A lot of times you've got your big like that. If, if you're Kerwin Walton, you've got to take your time, throw it to the hand. We've seen on multiple occasions the Carolina guards have led that pass to the bigs too far out, resulting in a turnover. So Baycott is back into the lineup for North Carolina. Walton trying to defend that baseline. Battle on the follow after the miss from the corner. And the play was set up by Thor being able to get to the baseline, and then everyone was focused on getting out to Jude. To Jude. No one opting to box, box out bad. Davis. Star Hill's able to break the pressure. 12.20 to go in the second half. Garcia. Powerful move. Bounces off the rim. Pember. Maybe Garcia deserved, deserved a better fate after that strong move to the rim. Couldn't convert. And now Thorpe, a wide open lane. Baycott closed. Shot clock is inside a 10 for the Bulldogs. Open man is Thorpe. Kimber. Popped in the air to Garcia. Good defensive possession by North Carolina being able to, to scatter and close out and come up with just that rebound. Baycott trying to get the handle and he scores. Almost impossible to stop inside for the ball. Back in, extended that lead for Carolina up to nine. Davis, I go back to being able to feed him, force them to collapse. That's going to allow North Carolina to get those wide open threes. Right now, I would continue to go to Baycott and make them half. Baycott completes the three-point play. 
spin deep. Runs into Davis. Davis. Fine defending, and he got it back from Baycott after the board. R.J. Davis, the sophomore, 6 feet, 175 pounds, with the ball right now for North Carolina. Closing the 11-minute mark of the second half. Baycott, strong with a baseline. Sweet. That's nice. And so here's what I'm going to tell you about Hubert Davis. You know, he's, he's old school. Old school guys, when they realize if you got something that's working for you, you go back to it. He realizes that they are not able to handle Armando Baycott one-on-one. -on -one. You feed him, allow him go to work. And so, again, I would continue to feed him on offense and make them make an adjustment. Trip back and five. So he's going to have to come out of the ball game. Jones will come in for Pember. Just two points in the game for Drew Pember. Leading scorer for UNC Asheville. 11 per game for Pember. And to the bench. Baycott hits the free throw. Pember just one of eight from the floor. Good close out by Garcia. Realized that Judas is good for that wide open three. Jones floats that one and hits it. How about Jones in the second half being able to find a little bit of offense? Again, only two points in the first half. He's come out and after getting those three free throws, like it's giving him a little shot of energy. The touch on the floater. With the floater, Brian, almost no follow through, right? You just throw it up like a knuckleball. Just a little, fall, bit, right? a little bit of a teardrop. Yep. Inside to Baycott. Nice, nice pass by Caleb Love, realizing he had Baycott. And again, Mando, Amanda, Amanda Baycott looks a lot better as far as how bouncy he is right now. Four assists for Love. Baycott is up to 20 points in the ballgame. Garcia got that board from the side of the rim. Love, Baycott. Free throws up coming for Carolina. And you know how he set that up is that he ran the floor, and a lot of times you see they kind of scored the last seven points for North Carolina. Big guys run the Baycott at the free throw line, four of five from the stripe. Trying to add to his total, well above his season average. Before that next free throw, a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro, powerful tools for any project with gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. So for the third time this season, Armando Baycott has exceeded the 20-point mark. Did it against Brown, against the College of Charleston, and he's done it tonight against UNC and Asheville. With, and with Hubert Davis having more shooting, especially from the big guys around him, that's going to give him more room to work where you're not looking at traditional Carolina big men where they have two guys in the post. Fort misses. Garcia the rebound. Armando Baycott is on a 9-2 run by himself. Will they feed him again? Love. That quick first that's step. That's nice. That's nice. And again, he was under control, being able to pass up that three. Last year, Caleb Love was just throwing that three up, but having a, a little bit more poise about him to get that runner off. Love, the sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. That'll be a foul against the Tar Heels. Crowd not exactly pleased with the call inside the Smith Center. Are they ever? <laughs> 438 wins in this building on Roy Williams Court at the Dean Smith Center. Opened up back in 1986. They win 85% of their games. And they, listen to this, Brian. They are 213 and 18 in this building on conference opponents. Wow. Coach Williams is in the building. <laughs> Watching his Tar Heels tonight. And another turnover. Jones trying to race baseline. Jones will pump up a three. Right in front of Baycott. Oh, it's a little layup there as that ball came loose. It was battle. And now Jones. Baycott may have got a piece of that one. Trying to go back the other way. Davis 
And that, that play was made by, by Baycott on the block, and then you see Caleb Love penetrating under control. R.J. Davis, that layup. Nine points for Davis, below his season average of 14 per game. 8.20 to go in the second half, so glad that you're with us for ACC basketball. Crew with you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. That is Lawson Short. Thorpe, around the edge. Does a complete orbit of the rim, lays it up, and could not calculate the angle or the physics. But, Tom, how about the defense by the Carolina Bigs? You see Garcia and Baycott doing a good job of being able to stay in front of him, and Garcia doing a good job of being able to challenge him. Wide open, Davis. Black over the top. Second opportunity. Little pump and layup. Good block by Law since the Asheville. Our heels have had the lead all the way tonight against UNC Asheville. Black was defending on Thorpe. Whistle stops play. Tar Heels have made five of their last seven shots and have the 60. Juanzo Baycott, the junior from Richmond, Virginia, 6'10", 240 on the interior for North Carolina. You mentioned it, Brian. UNC Asheville had cut the lead to seven points on the strength of Baycott and his play on the inside. For the third time this season, he's gone for 20 points or more. Garcia and Manning being able to close out on those shooters from UNC Asheville. A lot of times they're running that pick and roll and trying to get an open three. three. Carolina Biggs doing a good job tonight of being able to close out. Man, Battle has 14. He's the leading scorer and the only player in double digits for UNC Asheville. This is Black. That's been a little problems in the first half. Walton. He didn't get it away. Claire Aubrey was right on top of it and made the call. I thought R.J. Davis over-penetrated that time. You, you have Baycott that was down the half a bad place. Six and a half minutes to go in regulation. It's a season high. They have overcome that so far tonight, though. Mostly on the strength of Baycott. That was Doc Battle on the move and got fouled. Jamon Doc Battle will be at the free throw line. I've still been impressed on Baycott and how he's been able to handle the penetration by Battle for the majority of the night. Baycott picked up the personal foul for North Carolina. His first battle, his first free throws of the night was four of eight from the line coming into the evening. 10.6 boards in the win against Tennessee Tech. For UNC Asheville. This extended pressure by UNC Asheville has given Carolina some problems all, e all evening. This time they were able to break it. Walton saw the opportunity and seized it. And he realized he had Pember on him and needed to create a little bit of spacing. Four points now for Walton on two of three shooting. Three-pointer. UNC Asheville on the bench responds. Good penetration and kick. Pick and roll. High pick and roll action has been something that they've been able to use. Just a matter of being able to knock down those open shots. Bulldogs have attempted 33 threes tonight. North Carolina has attempted 11 and made five of those. That's all in the first half. Oh, he nice got block. blocked by Pember. Weak side defense by Pember. Jones in transition. Gave it up to Jude. He wants three. Back iron. Pember over Manic. Jude thought about reloading. Manic bodied up on Pember. That's where Jones has got to be shot ready. Jude deep in the shot clock, front rim, and Manic. That's eight rebounds now for Brady Manic, the Oklahoma transfer. Spent four seasons in Norman, made 235 three-pointers. This time he wants an assist. 
and he'll get it as Davis hits the three. Great lead by Brady Manning being able to realize he's got R.J. Davis on the weak side. Three-point line. Good read and not forcing the issue. Six made three of the ball game. For North Carolina by Davis. He's got 12 points in double digits. Shot clock at five. It's battle. Good defensive effort by North Carolina being able to close off that penetration. Good weak side help. Battle's got 19 points. That's a career high for Battle. Although he couldn't get that last shot to fall, but this foul is going to be against the Tar Heels. They've got the lead, 65-49 against the visiting Bulldogs. For R.J. Davis, who has the only made three of the second half for North Carolina. They made five, and he's got 12 points. He and Baycott, the only Carolina players into double figures, as you mentioned, Brian his refined moves this season on the inside. Well, I like the refined moves and how quick he is on offense, but again, going back to his defense, I was really impressed in that. You see Pember with a up and under, not being able to finish. Leaky Black. Manic. Entry, Baycott. Boy, he was going to tear the rim off his hinges and it bounced out with Pember on his shoulder. Came up short, but I really love the fact of him being able to get out and sprint. Puts a lot of defense, uh, a lot of pressure on the defense and transition to get back. Great help by Manic defensively after Baycott's man battle moved along the baseline. Shot clock at five, game clock at three minutes remaining. Thorpe with a turnaround. Good defense by Leaky Black. Being able to hold his position. Baycott. Davis. Man, it tried to flip it to Baycott. It was knocked away by four. Good job, Brady. You saw R.J. Davis with that lob pass. A lot of times, you tell guards to go ahead and fake that up and then a nice little bounce pass. Something that I'm sure that Hubert Davis joked with us earlier that this is their last game before having a break. And he said, you know what that does? Give us about a good week of a lot of practice. I'm sure that's one of the things that they were working on is post-entry. This is Manic. It rims out. Black. Offensive black. Next game, Brian, is December 1st against Michigan in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. That'll be a home game. And the first ACC game, December 5th, that's at Georgia Tech, which came up with a win yesterday against Charleston Southern. And we'll see Georgia Tech on a lot of these ACC stations. Coming up on Friday at noon against Georgia Southern. Jones, Manic. Brady Manic, known for his three point shooting, but also a guy that gives you another rim protector. He's come up big tonight. Rebounds and defending the, the basket. UNC Asheville has not scored in over four minutes. Coach Davis has to be pleased with the defensive effort at one end. Baycott made the move, couldn't come up with the finish. He's a little frustrated. The ACC Big Ten Challenge with Michigan, Georgia Tech, and then Elon Furman out of the Southern Conference, and then UCLA, which... <laughs> Number two in the nation right now behind Gonzaga. Well, and knowing Hubert Davis, he's probably obviously going to say, hey, Brian, we got to get through this one first. Another a week of practice. He's eyeing that Michigan and UCLA game as another test for his ball club for some get back. Davis misfires. UCLA, UCLA and Gonzaga getting together tonight, and then Duke will play Gonzaga Friday in Las Vegas. Fantastic early season matchups throughout college basketball. North Carolina lost in the semis of the tournament last year as Davis comes out of the game with 12 points. They lost to Florida State at the ACC tournament. There's the number six seed in Greensboro. So Black also out with his nine points and 11 boards. Those 11 rebounds a career high for Leaky Black. Previous career high was 10. 
So the senior from Concord, North Carolina, getting a breather with 1.30 to go. Tar Heels comfortably in front, although it was a seven-point game as that one was knocked away from Garcia. Drive by four. Garcia was part of a Marquette team last season that won here at North Carolina in February, 83-70, and Garcia had a double-double with 24 and 11. Well, very good passer. You know, a guy that, with that range also gives him another three-point shooter. And Hubert Davis talked about he doesn't want to have the traditional bigs with both guys on the post. He wants to have one guy that can get on the post and then some other guys that can extend it and have a range. And Garcia is one of those players that can give you that. Certainly Manic, one of those guys who can extend the range and shoot oh, the threes. Absolutely. I told you about Manic. Three from the corner. And it is good. Dunn's another guy that they're really high on. Nice penetration and finish and a good block. DeMarco Dunn with his first three of the season out of the corner. That was Dunn's first attempted three this year as well, Brian, and his first points. Had not attempted a shot or a free throw or three for the freshman from Tucson, Arizona, number 11 in white and Carolina blue. What be better way to get that first basket than in a three-point shot? Styles is also in there, number three in white. He's a freshman from Kinston, North Carolina. Anthony Harris ran into the screen by Lawson. Good close by Garcia to help out. Up ahead, McCoy. Stops. Let the defender go on by. Tipped in and good from Styles. His first points of the season right there with the tip in from Styles. A, a lot of first tonight. Just a second ago before that made three, North Carolina had its largest lead of the night. Final seconds, Brian Oliver. A lot of positive things for this North Carolina team. Again, we talked about that they wanted to come out and establish and then a big night by Armando Baycott. 22 points. He led all score. And he also had seven rebounds. More to come from Chapel Hill in just a moment. For every sport, there's a business behind the sport. Look at the impact.